I am a mother. I live in South Boston. And I met Dr. Shiva 11 months ago. I always like to share this story because I have no idea who the person was that actually introduced me to Dr. Shiva, but it was another mother who had shared on social media that he was doing a health lecture in uh, Back Bay. And I had no idea who he was. I'm not a political person. I've never voted in a primary before in my life. But when I heard him speak, and at the end of his uh, you know, scientific presentation, and it was on beyond vax, anti-vax, beyond left and right, I resonated with his message. And I'm like, I really don't know who this person is, but he's running for US Senate, and I will jump in and support what he's all about. So Dr. Shiva, as you know, is for truth, freedom, and health. And so that is why we've been on the road uh, the last couple days getting this message out across Massachusetts, right? Truth, Freedom, Health, Innovation Tour, right? And no forced vaccinations. I am for freedom. I am for medical freedom. And, yeah. And, um, you know, there are so many incredible things that, you know, I could say about Dr. Shiva and getting to know about him over the last 11 months. But I think what we all can attest to is him being an incredible teacher. And, you know, one of the the teachings he gave me is really helping me understand this whole system thinking, right? And how I can think for myself, how I can fight for myself. And, and I was someone literally 11 months ago, I'm from Vermont, I was ready to run to the mountains and hide because I did not like what I was seeing in Massachusetts. I have a three and a half year old and I was, I was, I was horrified to stay in Massachusetts. But when I heard about a scientist that was going to help fight, I was like, I will stay here and I will fight too. And I know that's why everyone here today, right? You're all here to fight, to all take action and you know, really stand behind what Dr. Shiva is really just giving us the vehicle, right? To be heard, to have a you know, fighting, fighting chance against all this corruption. So um, one of the other things I want to also highlight today, because it's also very important is today, is the 38th anniversary to email. So Dr. Shiva, as a 14-year-old boy, invented the first email system. So it's a pretty incredible thing to be do as a 14-year-old boy, and he definitely does not get the credit he deserves from mainstream, but I know working people and everyday people, uh, when they know the truth and see the truth, right, know that Dr. Shiva was, in fact, the inventor of email. And so he did that as a 14-year-old boy. And he, since then, he went to uh, MIT, got four degrees at MIT, and has created seven successful businesses. So he is an innovator, he is an entrepreneur, and he is definitely someone that we need, one of us, right, in the US Senate, really fighting and supporting us. So um, without further ado, please welcome Dr. Shiva, the inventor of email. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your beautiful Sunday to come out. Um, thank you, Jen. Well, we're out. Building community, boosting immunity. That's what we're doing right now, aren't we? Yeah. We're building community, boosting immunity. You got the sunshine, you have a community of people. You know, when you go to health, if we really want to talk about science and health, not fake science from Fauci, if we really want to talk about real science, I'm considered one of the leading guys in the world on the immune system, you start recognizing the number one reason that we live long and we survive the, the reason we live long is one reason, is because we have community and society and fellowship among people. Number one reason, when they did studies on why people live long, it turned out it was not about how much the right kind of food you ate, it wasn't about if you exercised. All the cultures that lived the longest were people had fellowship, which means they had strong community bonds where people felt safe, safe in their communities. And they felt they had friendships, they had people who they could connect with, 
have love and connection and brotherhood and sisterhood. That's number one reason. In 1988, there was a famous study done in the New England Journal of Medicine, which showed that social isolation, which means where you socially distance people, keep people away from each other, was, in, was worse. Get this, worse than high blood pressure, worse than obesity, and then worse than smoking. Which, by the way, are the three pre-existing conditions which most of the people, 98.2% of the people, who died of coronavirus had. In Massachusetts, 98.2% of the deaths were people who had pre-existing conditions. Okay? 98.2%. The average fatality rate from coronavirus, the age of the person, does anyone know what that was? 82.5. What's the lifespan in Massachusetts? 80. Close. Right? So 82 points. It seems like you live longer if you get the coronavirus. My point is that this entire thing with the coronavirus has nothing to do with real science, has nothing to do with public health. What it has to do is with fear-mongering, and it's about power, profit, and control. That's what it has to do with. Because if they cared about public health at all those meetings, Fauci, the little guy was up there, he would have talked about vitamin D3, which is an antimicrobial. The bums, the homeless guys, a lot of them, they didn't get coronavirus, frankly. They're out in the sun. Vitamin D3 creates proteins in your molecule which blow up viruses. 88,000 papers written on this. But not one time did Fauci talk about that. Now, one time did he talk about that people, when they get together, when we're happy, we boost our immune system. Stephen Cole's work in 2000 took humans and monkeys who are socially isolated. Guess what? At the genetic level, the body produced more inflammatory molecules, which are not good for us, and it produced less antimicrobials. Our body is a pharmaceutical factory, the most powerful natural pharmaceutical factory. When you support it, it protects you. When you don't support it, you ruin your immune system. You get a weakened immune system. What the fake news media, supported now by fake science, does is it scared all of us. It frightens us, right? Like they did with 9-11, like they did with AIDS. They always have a fear-mongering technique because with fear, they can pass the Patriot Act, right? They can pass forced vaccinations. They can pass everyone wearing these masks, which, by the way, don't do much. We all know that you wear the N95 mask, you're going to get headaches in two hours. If you want to follow the mask theory of protecting the immune system, here's my position to all those people. Wear a lot of masks, put cellophane around your head, stay in your house, don't leave. Don't leave your house, stay home. You're going to get, the food's going to kill you, the water's going to kill you. Don't shop, more food for us, okay? They should stay at home. Follow that line of rash thinking and you realize how stupid it is. But you follow the line of thinking I'm saying, which is based on science, boost immunity. Boost the immune system. Everyone here, we've got about, let's say 100 people here, take 100 times 380, about 440 trillion viruses, you have, you have what is that, 44,000 trillion viruses among all of us, okay? We each are a walking germ factory. We are supposed to interact. We're supposed to strengthen our body systems. A virus or a pathogen does not kill you. How many people thought a virus or a pathogen is what's killing people? Raise your hand. Tell the truth. Okay, good, we got smart people here. But the fake news media tells people, oh my God, that virus, that Ebola virus, you get it? It's gonna eat your heart alive, right? You start bleeding or the Coronavirus is going to blow up your lungs. The truth is, this is a scientific truth, it's a weakened and dysfunctional immune system. When you lower the immune system, your body, like a car having bad shock absorbers, reacts violently when you hit a bump, not nice and smooth, it starts attacking your own body. What happens when you hit a bump without a shock absorbers? You start destroying your car even more, you start hurting yourself and your passengers. That's what happens when you have a weakened and dysfunctional immune system. Your body attacks its own cells and tissues. 
In the case of Ebola, the virus particles land in the heart endothelial, so your body attacks that and you start bleeding. In the case of coronaviruses, it goes to your lungs and you start getting edema. You following this? It's not the virus is attacking you. We got 380 trillion right now in your own body. Can't be the virus. It's a dysfunctional and weakened immune system. Well, how do you get a dysfunctional weakened immune system? Dirty air, dirty water, dirty food. You're under a lot of stress, economic stress, psychological stress, physical stress, financial stress. You follow what I'm going? You're socially isolated. You have no friends. You get depressed. You start taking these antidepressants. Proven. 11,000 papers. They lower your immune system. So what did Fauci do? He told us to stay at home. He told us, what else? Stay out of the sun. Stay away from people. A lot of people got depressed. People started popping those antidepressants. This has nothing to do with public health. And fake Charlie Baker... Who is who negotiates with the Democrats? That's right, Faker Baker. Charlie Baker is not a Republican. He's not an American. He's a redcoat. And most of these people who run this country today are not one of us. They're redcoats. When they lost the American Revolution, they hated giving us the First Amendment. Us peasants. They hate us giving us the Second Amendment. Definitely the Second Amendment. So since that day, they've been trying to get back into power because remember, they thought they're the aristocracy, the kings, that they were connected to God and we had to go through them, right? That was the concept of a monarchy. So ever since that day, they embedded themselves back in the deep state of Harvard in Massachusetts and they've been trying to get back into power. And that's what they've been doing. Massachusetts is the center of the deep state. Harvard University being the epicenter. All the swamp rats, it's a sewer that feeds the Washington swamp. Romney, Harvard guy. Baker, Harvard guy. Weld, Harvard guy. They're the blue bloods who should have gone back to England. They should be with the queen now, but they're not. They're here. And they, every step they do is to take away our freedom because they never wanted to give us those freedoms. The reason my parents left India, I came here as a seven-year-old kid in 1970 on my seventh birthday. Literally, it was quite interesting. I left India on my seventh birthday. We landed here in John F. Kennedy Airport, and I had shorts on, and it was snowing. As I came down the TWA, I'd never seen snow. And a, a very nice American family took us to the Salvation Army, got us coats, jackets, etc. That's how we were introduced to America, by loving American people. The American working class is not racist. The people who are racist are the white liberals in Cambridge. Trumpers are not racist. Donald Trump is not racist. It, Elizabeth Warren is racist. Barack Obama is racist. Joe Biden is racist. Hillary Clinton is racist. Harry Reid is racist. These are the racists. And let me define what racism means so we get it clear because my goal, as Jennifer said, is to weaponize you with political weaponry, because you have to have the right political weaponry. So we need to call the, the racists out. The real racists are people who use race to divide us. That's racism, okay? Racism is those people who use race to divide us. When they tell us to put on those masks and one people have masks and the others don't, that's racism. Let me tell you why. That's against the human race. Because they're saying, we have robots here who play mindlessly, and over here, you're supposed to step in line. It has nothing to do with public health. It's racist. They want to divide people. Big feet people, small feet people. People who wear sunglasses, people who don't wear sunglasses. I mean, you can keep going on. They will find any way to divide us, particularly during an election cycle. This election cycle, they have the people very, very graciously putting the BLM things on their homes. And the other people, you know, who are supposed to be pro-police, you see? They've made it pro-police, pro-BLM. It's never like that. The police and people are, have always been united. Always. The people are, the police are part of our community. The police will always defend us against, ultimately against the government. If you look at the history of all revolutions, the police and the army have always come to the side of the people. Is that not true? 
So they want to divide us because they do not, because the, the elites know that they have created a fake economy. They've created a fake economy that, Eric, is Eric here? Eric, Eric, thank you Eric for hosting us. You know, you run a great business here. Anyone knows, thanks, thank, great thanks Eric. Everyone knows people like Eric, people run these small businesses are the ones who got really hurt by this coronavirus. Not Amazon, not Bill Gates, not Mark Zuckerberg, all these guys in, in literally in 90 days, since March, April, May, during that 90 day period, 600 billionaires increased their wealth by $2.3 trillion. And Eric, I'm sure you lost money, right? I lost money, I have a building in Cambridge, my business has lost money. My renters are not, you know, my renters who are actually making money are not, Charlie Baker gave them a free, they don't have to pay, but I still have to pay property taxes. He has to pay property taxes. All of us do. All of us here pay taxes. Harvard University doesn't pay taxes. $55 billion hedge fund, they don't pay a single dollar in property tax. They own 600 acres of Cambridge. We have a country right now where we have a caste system. The same caste system that we left in 1970 to come to this country from India. That's what we have. Charlie Baker's part of that caste system. The Democratic Party's part of that caste system. And what we have in this election this year is to break that. Because if we don't break it, it's going to be slavery. I'm telling you, that's what they want. They do not want guys like Eric running his own business, standing up on his own two feet. They don't want guys like me innovating. I started seven companies here, one thousands of jobs I created. They don't want innovators here. That's what Central Mass and Western Mass is made up of. People who work hard. We are the real Americans. They're not Americans. They may wave, Charlie Baker may wear that little pin or whatever, but he's not an American. An American is someone who works bottoms up, who believes in freedom, who believes in the First and the Second Amendment. Right? The Second Amendment, great for hunting, but that's not what it was designed for. The Second Amendment is what makes this country great. It was designed so we could protect ourselves from the government. And I don't think there should be any restrictions on any type of weapons. That's my position to be very clear about that, because we have the deep state government which sells all sorts of weapons to our enemies, and they're questioning what weapons as though they can't trust us. But the bottom line is this, that in 2020, we have to be extremely smart. We have to get our politics right about who we elect. Are we going to continue to put our faith in lawyers and lobbyists? Lawyers, I'm running against three lawyers. Malarkey on the Democrat side and Kennedy. Okay, joke. Joke Kennedy. He's a joke. If you heard him speak, guy can't speak. And then Charlie Baker found a designated loser, total loser. The guy can barely speak. Barely speak. Found him with 100 Twitter followers to try to keep him at my level. What did we do? We raised 20,000 donations from all of you. No big money. 20,000 donations from everyone here. 7,000 lawn signs, 500,000 cards we've given out. It's a true bottoms-up movement. None of them are working as hard as our volunteers. None of them have people like this coming out. We had 200 people in Chicopee, 250 people show up in the Boston Commons, 100 people in Worcester. People show up within 24 hours' notice. People want real change. No more lawyer lobbyists. No more Kennedys. No more Malarkeys. No more Charlie Bakers. No more GOP establishment. No more. No more. And it's time we realize that we respect ourselves. People who work, start businesses, work hard, pay taxes, they don't pay taxes. They don't work. Lawyers make money. How do they make money? They find a problem or create a problem, cha-ching, then they prolong the problem, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. The longer a dispute goes on, the longer you and I are fighting, the more money they make. I'm sure if you don't fix your bowling alley, you lose money. People want a refund, right? I don't, if I don't deliver a piece of software on time, give me my refund. These guys, they keep making money as long as there's a problem. So just think about that. 70% of Congress are lawyers. Why did we vote them in? Why?
because we're like abuse victims, okay? We keep thinking, well, you know, he did that because of this. I'm going to rationalize it. No more. We don't do that anymore. We stand up for ourselves, and the people we elect have to be one of us. they got to be one of us. They can't be one of them. Slick Willies, Obamas, Charlie Bakers. They, they're not one of us. They haven't worked. They do not work. They cheat. We went and got 20,000 signatures. They paid someone to get their signatures on the ballot. They don't work, guys. Everything they do is how much they can manipulate and cheat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, got, we got to take these guys out. I mean, take them out. We got to take their legs out, okay? And that's what we need to do in this primary. In this September 1st primary, we need to take the legs out of the GOP establishment because they work with the Democrats. There is no two parties here. It's one party establishment. The Republican Party establishment, bunch of fake Trumpers, by the way. The guy who heads this up, Jim Lyons, didn't even want a lawn sign put on his lawn, a Trump sign. He said, get that off my lawn, to my friend. Now he's a Trumper wearing the Make America Great Act. No, you're not a Trumper. Right? A lot of those fakers running around right now because they, they're using the president's name to raise money. And that's what these fake guys do. Charlie Baker said he wasn't going to vote for the president. The pre this president, if we didn't have this president, this country would be so screwed. Okay? There was a God at work in 2016. There really was. And the satanic forces <laughs> were so pissed off that he won, every day they've been fighting him. And what they've really been doing is fighting the working people. Not just him, the working people who voted in. And in 2020, they're even more evil. And they're gonna do everything possible and the center of that evil is Massachusetts. It really is. And the epicenter is Harvard University. And so that's why our winning this U.S. Senate, it's our winning, not my winning, our winning is going to be like, you know, when you ever watch those vampire movies when they put the stake into, the, into Dracula? That's what it's going to be like to the deep state. That's why we have to win. And we cannot be compromising. We have to go all out. We have to go with a ferocity to win. We have to go with the ferocity of warriors to win this because these people are not nice people. They're not nice. They've sold this country out to China. China owns every movie theater, AMC movie theater in the United States. They own all the Hollywood people. So culturally, they're not going to say anything against China. They own the Harvard School of Public Health, $400 million they gave them. They own 70% of the professors in academia. So you're not going to get any real science. Professional sports. Professional what? Sports. Exact frauds? Sports. Exactly. They own NBA. They own everything. So what do we have left? We only have us. And you have to remember that. And us means us, not lawyers. I mean, it's no coincidence you got an MIT PhD who busted his buns, four degrees from there, started seven companies, came from nothing. Yeah. One of us. I grew up in the working class, white working class towns in New Jersey. None of those people were racist. I saw more racism in Cambridge among those white multiracial liberal elites like Elizabeth Warren. As, as Jennifer said, in Newark, New Jersey, when I was a kid, I worked hard. I was smart, but I worked hard. By the time I was 14, I finished up calculus. But I wasn't just a nerd. I could throw a fastball still. Better than Fauci, far better. <laughs> played varsity baseball, played varsity soccer, undefeated teams. I was good, very good. So I wasn't just a nerd. I started working as a full-time scientist at Rutgers Medical School in the heart of Newark, where a lot of people were told not to go into. You get mugged. 14 years old, I work with people 50, 60 years older than me, white folks who treated me as an equal. White working class people also grew up. The white working class has never been racist. Never. They're the kindest people, the best people who supported me. They taught me how to mow lawns. They taught me how to landscape. They went to the Salvation Army, got me jackets when I 
when I came, my family came here with nothing. So in, in 1978, this 14 year old kid with all that support, I wrote 50,000 lines of code. I converted the old fashioned inner office mail system. I know many of the women here, either you were secretaries or you had mothers who were secretaries. Remember we had the old desktop, the typewriter, the inbox, the outbox, the folders. Remember that and every office had that. You'd write this thing called a memo. Anyone below the age of 40, you may not know this, but this was the stuff before email or social media. In any organization, the memo was the social media, right? You would write, if you were gonna hire Eric, you would say to your boss, subject hiring Eric, you would attach his resume, you would carbon copy other people, you would send it around in these pneumatic tubes, inbox, outbox folders. I converted that entire system, which no one had done before. In fact, the elites thought it was impossible, it's documented, into the electronic version and 50,000 lines of code. And I named that system email. And I chose that term because the operating system only allowed five characters. Before I came to MIT. When I came to MIT, it was on the front page. The president of MIT said, hey, Shiva, you should protect your invention. You should get a copyright for it. You couldn't patent it because the dumb lawyers in Congress didn't understand what software was. They didn't create patent protection until 1994. But in 1980, I could use copyright to protect it. I rode away. My parents weren't like Bill Gates' parents, lawyers. And on August 30th today, 38 years ago, a young American boy was issued the first U.S. copyright for email, recognizing me as the inventor of email. I wrote the code, got the, got the copyright. That's, that's the facts. One of us created email in working class towns in this country. It wasn't done at MIT. Now, 33 years later, I never spoke about it. I was a humble guy. I've had to learn how to be a little more unhumble to tell the truth more. But I did many other things. Went to MIT, four degrees, many companies, invented many other things. But in 2011, my dear mom was dying of a horrible disease called pulmonary fibrosis in a beautiful suitcase. She had saved all those computer code, the copyright. The editor of Time Magazine, the science editor, the only guy who was a little bit honest went through it and he wrote an article, you can look it up, November 2011, the man who invented email. Facts. Three months later, the Smithsonian contacted me and they said, Dr. Shiva, we want all your materials. It went into the Smithsonian on February 16, 2012. A Washington Post reporter wrote a story called Dr. Shiva Honored as the Inventor of Email. The day she wrote that story, her, her own editor threw her under the bus. So it happened. And articles came out calling me a fraud, this, that. I mean, unbelievable. Why? And I was teaching the most successful course at MIT while running a company, not charging a penny like Elizabeth Warren was charging 350K. And overnight, I became a fraud. They never because denied you wrote the program. They denied that they I wrote the no, program. They, no, the they never denied you wrote the program. Right. He said they never denied I wrote the program. They never could deny I didn't have the copyright. They never could deny I named it email. It's just denial of facts. Why? Because the invention of email has nothing to do with me, but it has to do with us. And this is what you got to listen to because the invention of email took place before MIT. You see? As long as I was inventing stuff at MIT, I was a good Indian. You get it? Playing into their role of diversity and inclusivity. But when email was invented before MIT in New Jersey by a working class kid, that blows their mind. It doesn't compute. Because all great innovations are done by everyday people. A young boy, a 14-year-old boy, Philo Farnsworth, invented TV. Look it up, in Franklin, Idaho. A young Michigan mechanic is the one who created the automatic windshield wiper. And two MIT professors stole it from him, okay? They wanna deny our humanity because innovation is in everyone's DNA. They wanna make it that you gotta be a Mark Zuckerberg and drop out of Harvard, that's a good story, you see? Or a Bill Gates who wants to vaccinate us all. That's a good story. But wait a minute. You created email before you came to MIT, that had to be denied. So you'll see in the press, I was called names, attacked, 
Finally, four years later, I was very fortunate. I found a lawyer and we sued. People would laugh at me, oh, ha, ha, you know, Al Gore. No, I actually did invent email. I fully invented nothing. We sued Gawker Media. We won a major lawsuit. Gawker was a company, if you, yeah, thank you. It's, it's, it's a win for all of us. Gawker was a company who would do clickbaiting. They, they put Hulk Hogan sex video out. They would do anything to get attention. Remember that? He sued. He won. I sued. Two days later, $35 million lawsuit. My lawyer, Charles Harder, who's now the president's lawyer, sued. We won, and we drove Gawker into bankruptcy. That's what she, we, we need to do to these guys. Drive them into bankruptcy. We drove them. We got a settlement. But the fact is... Racists like Wikipedia want to deny that. They make historical fiction. When a guy with four degrees from MIT and a PhD starts helping working class people, who are my people, they have to start branding us. But we don't care. We go after them. And that's what I love about this president. He goes after these guys. That's what we do. We don't give them one inch. Not one inch. We're too nice. The American people, you know, I've, I've traveled to 56 countries, the nicest, most sincere, kindest people, but sometimes naive. We don't know the evil nature of people like the Chinese. We don't know, it's the Chinese Communist Party to be specific, not Chinese people. We don't know the evil nature of people like Charlie Baker and his clan. So it's time we wake up. And that's what this movement is about. And that's why people are here on a Sunday at, what time is it? 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? 5 p.m., okay? Forget the time. But you understand what I'm saying? That's why we're all showing up. Police are showing up. Black people are showing up. White people are showing up. Immigrants are showing up. All, all different people come to this campaign. We even have Democrats switching, going to register as unenrolled for our campaign. Walk away. Because this is not about Democrat or the Republican people. This is about the establishment of the Republican and Democrat establishment. They want to divide left and right. They want to divide black and white. Why? Because they don't want working people to unite. They want to divide us. Exactly. They want to keep us divided. Why? Because as long as we're divided, 600 billionaires can execute a coronavirus fear-mongering scam, make $2.3 trillion, and guys like Eric, and us, 38 million people can lose their jobs. We lose our economic value. And they use that because they want people on the dole. They want us on the plantation. They want us on the plantation, right? They want us on the plantation. Why? Because they can control us. Wear masks, socially distance, not be humans anymore. So I'm telling you, this election is about freedom versus slavery. It's about whether small businessmen like Eric are gonna, the, the, the engine of American economy are gonna survive or is it gonna be big companies? Amazon, Walmart, Dunkin' Donuts, Burger King, or McDonald's, right? That's who was all open. What's that? And Bill, Bill Gates, et cetera, et cetera. It, it is truly about good and evil. So the opportunity we have right now is we have to take a stand and we have to take a firm stand. And because this country, the greatest, the greatest aspect of this country, Richard's got on his thing, truth, freedom, and health. We put freedom in the middle because freedom is what glues truth and health together. Because without freedom, the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, our ability to converse, dialogue openly, we got nothing. And Facebook, Google, Twitter, Verizon, AT&T, they want to constrain that freedom. The Postal Service of the United States was not just a postal service. It was created by Washington and the founders to support communications among all of us. Go look at the 19, 1792 Postal Service Act. The Postal Service wasn't just about print mail. It was about communications. Freedom, they discussed. Privacy. Well, the Postal Service has sort of shot itself in the foot. Google and, I mean, Google and all these companies have taken over. In 1997, email volume overtook postal mail volume. And we, when we signed up for those free email, we gave up our freedom. So we have a Digital Rights Act, which I have a bill already written, the first I step into con as, as a Senate. And what does that bill say? The Postal Service needs to reinvent itself. The laws are already there. It may seem interestingly weird initially, but the Postal Service was supposed to provide us the commons, 
for all of us to be able to be the press. According to the founders, you, 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 everyone in this room was the press. And they made it really easy through the Postal Service for us to be able to freely communicate. If the Second Amendment supported the First Amendment, the First Amendment was also supported by the Postal Service. You guys get what I'm saying? It's something we've forgotten. And the Postal Service never reinvented itself to also provide us digital infrastructure. Because if we had that, 20 to 50 bucks a year we pay them. All of our communications are protected by a law which says that anyone who interve intervenes is 22 year sentence in prison. And that's how we fight Google and Facebook. They can't be regulated. They want regulations. Do you understand? The big guys love regulations because when a new Facebook comes, they'll be squashed. Exactly. Exactly. What's that? They're anti-conservative. Well, they're anti-human. Anti okay? So, you can read about the Digital Rights Act. And then truth, how do we get to truth? Well, the people who control truth today are who? The academics. And the academics can write a paper saying, okay, blah, 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 blah. They publish it in some nice journal in 12-point font, put a bunch of their names, Harvard University, that must be truth. Some young 20-year-old kid at the Boston Globe copies it, cuts and bases it, and it becomes reality, okay? That's what's going on. The, two months ago, a bunch of scientists published a paper in Lancet, which is a very prestigious health journal, saying hydroxychloroquine will kill you. People said, where's the data? Can I see the raw data? No data. They lied. And that's what's going on every day. These academics are practice now the oldest profession. It's pay to play science. It's worse than journalism. And how do we solve that? The Citizen Science Act. It's up on the website. All, anytime we fund, we the people, give one dollar, one penny to academic research, that's our data. They do an experiment, they gotta put it up. I wanna see the data. Show me the data that CO2 is a pollutant. I wanna see it. No one can get the data. We should be able to get rights to that data. It's our data. You see what I'm saying? This is how we cut their legs off, okay? We gotta go to the root of the problem, not, you know, Band-Aid solutions. Finally, the Health Rights Act, that gets to the health. The government wants to do Soviet-style, Chinese Communist Party-style healthcare. We tell you to vaccinate all your kids, they all should get 32 vaccines. You say, okay, well, your kids get injured. Okay, can you sue them? Can you sue the vaccine companies? No, you can't, why? Who protected them? 1986, who, put the who sponsored the 1986 bill? Kennedy and Markey, okay? And who originally created the Vaccination Act? Sorry to say, John Kennedy, the Kennedy Vaccination Act, based on fake science of the immune system. So 1962, Kennedy signs an act which says that all of us need to start getting vaccinated. 1986, people are getting injured because one size does not fit all. One size does not fit all. So what did Ted Kennedy do? Raped, murdered, deceitful, he gets away with it. Any of us do that, we're in jail. He got away, he got to be a senator. Amazing. Quite incredible, right? So what did he do? He creates the 1986 Vaccination Act, and that act allows the pharma companies no longer to be held liable. Instead of getting rid of his brother's very bad act of 1962, because the Kennedys just protect the Kennedy Camelot legacy, and we all get brainwashed, oh my God, the Kennedys are such great people. Not so great people, if you really look into them. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I hate to, you know, we've, been, we've seen a lot of wonderful pictures. They had really good photographers. I got to give them that, okay? So, 1986, we have the National Vaccine Injury Program, which basically put a Chinese wall, no pun intended, between us and the vaccine manufacturers. You can't sue them in federal court. You got to go to this little vaccine court they set up over here. And in that vaccine court, if your child was killed, only $250,000 liability. That's what Ted Kennedy brought us. Okay, these are the facts. And then after that, they gave us some, you know, breadcrumbs. Okay, uh, you can get medical exemptions or religious exemptions. Then the third Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr., who's one of the biggest frauds, talks a good game against vaccines. He endorsed vaccine queen Hillary Clinton three times.
three times. She, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Bill Gates gave her foundation $100 million for vaccine research. All right? Robert Kennedy Jr. endorsed her. And he's out there saying, I'm against vaccines. No, he isn't. His video actually says, I'm pro-vaccine. I believe we should vaccinate everyone. But what these guys are very clever, and I want to end on this, the reason we got to be very smart in 2020, it's not just the obvious establishment. Because counter to the ob obvious establishment is us. We build a movement bottoms up. And when they see our movement coming bottoms up, you know what they do? They start finding the not so obvious establishment. They find people who speak the same words and they take over movements and they distract them. You say, well, he sounds so good. He looks good. Well, yeah, but he's part of the establishment. You follow what I'm saying? It's called the not so obvious establishment. The enemy is very clever. And the way you judge who you follow is where did they come from? Where did they come from? Look at their resume. Did they work for a living? Are they lawyers? Do they have customers to serve? Do they lose their job if they don't solve a problem? That's how you should judge it. We should go down to the facts, the truth. Eric, you don't serve your customers, you're gone, right? A lawyer, he keeps going on. So we got to be smart. Don't look at people's words. Look at what they've done. Look at where they came from. We got to start voting for us. We got to support one of us not one of them. We got to become smart in 2020. Otherwise, I'm telling you, this country will be owned by China and the traders who are selling this country out to China. John Boehner, quote unquote Republican, is a lobbyist for China right now, okay? These people will wave the flag to get our boys when they need to go fight their imperialist wars. That's what they do, but they're traitors. The only people we can trust is us. And that's why we must win this Republican primary. Because it's not a Republican primary, it's our primary against the establishment. We win that, it's like sending a nuclear weapon right to Charlie Baker. Thank you very much. You all know me, I'm Ralph Sam. I own the property you're standing on. I'm Eric's father, by the way. <laughs> I uh, was the CEO for Shriners Hospitals for Children for nine years. I ran all 22 hospitals. I had many opportunities to go through Washington, talk to the congressmen, talk to the senators. And at the time, most of them were Democrats. And they would just tell me what they thought I wanted to hear. We need to be Republicans. We need to vote Republican. We need to overthrow some of these Democrats that are out there just telling us a bunch of lies. I've been a Republican all my life. My son is. We're proud of it. Not too many people up here. I always joke about the fact that if I want to talk to somebody, I can never get a Republican to come onto the property. I don't know why, but uh... <laughs> anyway, I'm Republican. I'm voting Republican all the way. Let's go with Trump and Dr. Shiva. Good luck. Thank you very much. Real Republicans, okay? We need real Republicans because they're real Americans like Eric's father. That's what we need. Let's define what it really means to be a Republican. Those are people who work bottoms up, who work hard, who believe in excellence. We believe in working hard and not cheating. We believe in pro-life. We believe life begins at conception, but we need to go beyond that. We should realize that life also continues after birth, right? Which means we should continue to protect the air, the water, and the food. That's also life. A lot of conservatives are pro-life during the conception phase, but they forget when our babies come out, our children come out, we're voting for people who are polluting the atmosphere, the water, and the air. Pro-life all the way, right? That's what we want. That's a real Republican. It's time that we become real Republicans. Lincoln was a Republican. He brought this country together. Republicans bring things together. So in closing, I want to leave you with this. Beyond black and white, beyond left and right, working people must unite. All right? That's what we got to do. That's Republican. Think about what, what Republican Lincoln had to do. They were trying to rip apart this country. He brought it together. That's what Republicans do. We bring things together. It's people and police united. We can't get caught into this thing. BLM over here, police. No, no, that's, you see what I'm saying? They want to create that split. 
Then they'll say the people who support the police are white supremacists and the people who support Black Lives Matter are the good people. See what I'm saying? Yeah. The way we, we stop that is police and people united. We are united. We've never been separated, okay? They want to create false differences. So we got to bring people together on the right parties. No false unity, but real unity. So truth, freedom, and health. 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 Louder, come on. Truth, freedom, and health. 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 Unite. We unite against the establishment. We don't let them split us up. We the people. We are one people. This is the United States of America, and we unite against them. But we must know there's an enemy. Thank you, everyone. Everyone here, get out and vote in the Republican primary. If you have friends or independents, tell them.